from Ooh. one of our viewers. I'll read it. I'll read it for everybody. It says, Dear Sir, this is to, written to the producer of TVAM. Dear Sir, I would like to pay tribute to your guest for Friday, John Pertwee. During the summer, he has given countless numbers of children great pleasure at the International Garden Festival, appearing as Wurzel Gummidge. My two grandsons, David and Michael, spent many hours trying to see Wurzel, without success due to the size of the place and the thousands attending. However, on the very last day, minus the kids, who do I bump into but Wurzel Gummidge? At my request to him, just to say hello into my video camera, John made a great little act out of saying hello to David and Michael. This has more than made up for the disappointment of missing him live. A real gentleman. Many thanks, Arthur Critchley. Quite right. Isn't yes. that nice? Yes, I, remember, I remember Mr Critchley very well indeed. It's extraordinary because I was there for months, you know, at the International Garden Festival and I used to do about 25 mile a day on a little motorcycle. And I'd, I used to cover thousands of people and yet still people would say, we've been, you know, Half a dozen times, we've never seen you, we brought the kids, and we, we yeah. never can find you. But old Wurzel on his bike? A Wurzel riding around on his bike. Yeah, I'm not going to walk 25 miles. <laughs> no, thank you. Not at, not at my age, my dear. No. Oh, so he was a great favourite of mine, Wurzel. Oh, he's coming back, oh. I hope. Is he? Well, I hope, yes. I, that I've heard tell that a certain lovely new channel is, um, is going to repeat them. Oh, good. And uh, also, I hope that um, we, with the uh, assistance of the United States of America, American. <laughs> that, we, uh, that we might um, get some American money and uh, perhaps remake Wurzel Village. I'm sure we I'm probably have a lot of children watching at the moment. Do you want to say a special hello? Yes. I, I've got, I, it's very difficult because I ain't got me Wurzel head. Which, which <coughs> old do I look down that one? I ain't got me, me uh, Wurzel head on today. I got me handsome head because I knew I was with this pretty lady, you see. <laughs> Thank you. We've got a clip uh, from the television series, oh, Wurzel Gummidge, in which John playing the scoundrel of a scarecrow is putting actress Joan Sims on the spot. Good afternoon. I'm sorry, I've no change. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned change, Mrs. I'm glad you brought that subject up. How would you like to change places with me? Stand aside, please. Uh, not forever. Uh, just until after tea time. I have to do with the afternoon off, you see. Will you please let me pass? <sighs> You'd make a fine scarecrow, you witnesses. <laughs> Stand you in the middle of ten acre field. You'd frighten every rook from here to Foggy Bottom. Oh, I... <laughs> I'm telling you, I shall call a policeman. Oh, a policeman would be no good on this job, Mum. Not too ordinary looking. No, you need to be ugly. Like you and me with a big ugly hat like you wear. I'm making note of your offensive remarks. I've seen you before, and I shall know you again. Look, I'm asking you nice and polite, Mrs. Will you be a scarecrow, not just for the afternoon? It's quite easy, Mrs. All you have to do is just take one arm, put it out there, one arm, put it out there. Police! No, no. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. Wasn't she lovely? Yeah. No, Did you supply all your own clothes, John, for that? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm breaking these down. Yeah. <laughs> for the next oh, it's series. It's lovely to see, isn't it? Oh, I love see Wurzel. Great. Anyway, move from Wurzel to Popeye now. And uh, this morning's cartoons for two big fans of Superstar. <laughs> Can I just explain that John Pertwee is also with us, if you only just tuned in? Right. Um, this actually talking about uh, glamour. Oh, whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you see, I saw Sophie Loren, she wears the little scarves. <laughs> <laughs> all the rest of it. I, well, that's very nice. Thank you very yeah. much. Does it bother you? Well, I know, darling. Yeah, when you put it like that, it's an amazing thought, actually. You've got to accept it. I don't mind. Mm. I, they only I'm comment on happy. your age because you're yes. so fantastic for it, you know. I mean, there'd be no oh. point in saying it otherwise. Oh, darling. If you looked your age, they wouldn't bother and saying it. I feel, it. I feel great. I feel, Do you? I don't feel and you, <laughs> I've you, been on tour with him. That's yeah. right. God, <laughs> he gets you going this way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we better not give him too many secrets. <laughs> I don't know what you mean, Miss Wilson. <laughs> right now, we'll take Good a break. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, London yeah, is 14. You? Thank you, Barbara. John? Right, please, would you wish my grandson, Dean Roden, Happy birthday on Friday the 26th of October, aged six years. From Grandad, Gran, Mondad. I don't know what that is. What's a Mondad? <laughs> M-O-M, Mondad. Mom. Oh, and Mom, Dad. Dad. Mom, Dad, Sister Sarah, Andrew, Craig, Auntie, Auntie Anne, Uncle Mick. Lots of love, thank you. 182 All Saints Way, West Bromwich. Thank you. Thank you. Fancy words or not be able to read a birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got me reading there, darling. <laughs> <laughs> now for the last of this week's pop videos and this morning's is the new one from Miami Sound Machine which is called... Let's that one out later. Right now it's Postbag and Jenny.
Thank you very much, and good morning to you all, and thank you for one of the juiciest post bags to date. Several of you wrote in about the miners, more of you wrote in about the National Health, and literally let us know of their travels and their capers. Why, let them advertise for free. Make them use the papers. Oh. I thought I told you not to say that, and John Kirby was here. Yes, shall I go all now? Right. <laughs> I'll just put these books away, John. Oh, God, we all went there. No, well, I think that's disgraceful. Yes, absolutely disgraceful. I, I, shall leave. I, I must just say, we, we've been absolutely <laughs> swamped with letters about half term etc it's a great problem and we do apologize at home but the the half term stretches over about four weeks you know and we picked the two weeks that they're the most subscribed to in terms of half terms you say that um derby's half term is not next week mm. but in the midlands just further south uh, birmingham is next week. we'll see you in a moment <laughs> make reference in your book to the family beza will you please explain the beza yes this was a polite name for a schnozzle <laughs> for the nose yeah. yes uh, it's, an, it's an old London term, isn't it? Yes, a beezer? Yes, uh, yes, got a right good beezer right, on him. Yes. yes. And so yes. is it it's so it's definitely we, We've a all got trait. these. Yes, it's a family trait. Yes. Mm -hmm. Everybody's pleased about it except my daughter, Daryl. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so she'll get it bobbed, I suppose. And, and something else that intrigued me in your book was your incredible escape involving HMS Hood mm. during the war. Can you just tell us that story? Uh, we was, I was very lucky that I was in, uh, in the lower deck of the Navy and uh, I was in the Hood, the battle cruiser, and... Uh, I, I was a CW candidate, an officer candidate, and I was suddenly sent for by the captain, who uh, asked me to explain to him all about uh, Radio Luxembourg, which I used to work on. It seemed a very strange thing to do. To Same, suddenly strange sent question for, in the middle of a war. Strange question in the middle of a war, and just about to go into action. Against the Bismarck. The, against the Bismarck. And uh, so I, I talked to him for half an hour. He said, splendid, thank you so much. And w within a very short space of time, I was over the side and, uh, and off and taken off as a CW candidate because he didn't want to risk his uh, officer candidates, because we were supernumeraries on board. Mm -hmm. We weren't absolutely essential. And so 16 of us were taken off. And when the ship sailed into action, only three men survived, of which one was my messmate, Bob Gosh. Tilburn. And 1,487, was it? Uh, yes, I, well, uh, over 1,400 men went down in, in a matter of seconds. That is an astonishing escape. But, I, but it, it was so close that my parents and my loved ones received all my letters uh, with missing, presumed, kill written on the envelopes. So it was that close. Well, there's many, many people delighted that you made it, John. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for telling us that story. Wincy. Just before, um, you were asked if you could speak French. Which oh, you when can. I was in the Navy? Yes. Yes, yes. Well, I could speak French, a sort of French. My grammar's been indifferent, but I could speak French, colloquially. And, uh, yes, and a, a gentleman from the Admiralty came down just after I'd received my commission and said, uh, Patrick, you speak French, don't you? And I immediately saw visions of myself being landed on the coast of France as a spy or something. I said, no, no, this is not for me. I said, uh, um, no, no, it's very bad, very bad indeed. I, uh, he says, well, it says in your report that you can speak French in your papers. And I said, yes, well, very badly. Not good enough for what you want, <laughs> so I'm sure. So he said, um, oh, I see. Well, we'll talk about that later. You shouldn't have put that in your, in your papers. And then he went up to a fellow, which I remember his name very well, called Tony Rankin. And he said, do you speak French? He said, oui, ça, je parle un petit peu le français. <laughs> He said, well, that's terrible. He said, uh, well, je, je parle bien, mais uh, l'accent est pas très bon. <laughs> so he said, yes, well, you'll do, follow me. And he went and I said, idiot, you know, volunteer. <laughs> and, and so he came back a few minutes later and I rushed over and said, well, go on then, what was the job? He said, resident naval officer in Tahiti. <laughs> <laughs> and he was. And years later, when I, was, when I was staying in Tahiti, about 30 years ago, I, I went up to a, a, the British consul there called Freddie Devonish and I said, did you know a fellow in the Navy, who was here as was the naval representative, Tony Rankin. He said, oh, yes, oh, boom, boom, Rankin. Yeah, by God, we knew him, didn't he? He said, winking at the girls, and they all giggled. Well, but he had a wonderful right. time throughout I the war. I hated him. <laughs> I bet he had the best war ever. <laughs> but the time is 8.35. We'd better move on, hadn't we? Yes. To oh, television? Yes. Oh, it's a fascinating story. Yes. That, isn't it? That's, from yes. his, that's from his book. From yeah. my book. Do you know something? Yes, it's I, a lovely book. What's it? Say, it, it, it is a great, on the back is a very pretty picture of me and, and my wife. That's my wife on the left. That's the dog on the right. <laughs> that's oh, Ingeborg rude. on the right. And do you know she's got a book coming out too? That, that, so both of us in the same week. My goodness. Yeah, but we're not allowed to talk about books because that... Oh, aren't we? Oh, well, we're talking yeah, about, about mine. Right. 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 Let's, let's, let's talk about, let's talk about television about then. It's really about cooking. Uh, television. Right, tonight, Airwolf.
has started. It started a couple of weeks ago, actually. Oh, yeah, tap us in the comments. And they named a comic after you, the Beezer. My yeah. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And years yeah, the ago, Mark, of course, they it? had a thing called Radio Fun, which we yes. used to oh. appear in. Yeah. Yes. All the radio oh, shows memories. up the pole we did. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Ray Dennis, very much indeed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very good name. Yeah. My middle name is Roland. Is he? Yes, yeah, a good name. Fantastic. You, you named it's a after brilliant me. name, yes, isn't it? Morning, Barbara. Superstar. Morning, Roland. They're stars like me, they are. Could you get on with it, please, before we run out of time? But we run out of time? Yes. Oh, good. I'll speak slower then. Get on with it. Wreck the show. <laughs> Am I supposed to link the cartoon yes. in? Yes, could you please? Yes, you please. be quiet, Nicholas. Nobody <laughs> asked you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you, could, uh, if you could say, here is the Incredible Hulk and all that stuff. Yeah, all right, then I'll do the link. Yeah, I'm getting a countdown here from the floor manager. <laughs> Go on, do... Hello, Roland, how you doing? <laughs> why your ears, why your ears sticking out like that? How uh, dare you? <laughs> <laughs> My ears are insured for £6,000, £3,000 per ear. <laughs> Hello, Wurzel. How you doing? Very nice to meet you. Uh, you know, do, 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 do. What's your, what, is your name Roland? Yeah. Do you know what Roland is in Wurzelese? What? Over, 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 Now that is a television first. Yeah, it is. It's a yeah. great pleasure, isn't he it? He wants to do a plug for his book now. Go on, do your pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, yes, it's called Moon Boots and Dinner Suit. And it's marvellous. Yeah, it's very good, yeah. yes. And this is Saucy Nancy. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not going to plug my pantomime. Oh, yeah, yeah. you plug your pantomime. Dick, oh, yes, Dick Whittington at Where the Orchard Theatre, Dartford, Kent. Okay. Brilliant. Hooray! Yeah. 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 What do you play? Don't have any time. Well, I'll just plug tomorrow morning's program because I'm back after two weeks in Spain. I heard Mike Morris was too good. So yes, I came back and I elbowed, elbowed him. What do you mean he was, he was a, bit? a bit? And I'll be with you next week, yes, so you better... You better and be me? Better. What about me? You'll and be him? with me, too. Yes, Roland, I will. It'll be a great honour for you. Yeah. I'm glad to be out anyway, Pearl Carr and Teddy Johnson tomorrow, Michael Benteen, Tommy Trinder and uh, Saturday, Jimmy Edwards. Sa Jimmy Edwards, good man. Thank you very much. He knows more about it than I do. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Saturday call is on working mothers. You'll know all about that, Roland. Yeah. And Mike Gatting, the English cricket vice captain, is coming in to talk to us in the sports well, that's spot. That's a thrill for you. And I'll be on. Will you on be Monday. on again tomorrow? I'll be on tomorrow, yeah. Are you on tomorrow? Why do wait, clubs? Well, yeah, don't last, miss that, Rat Vance. The last <laughs> of the dream home, which we've been promising for weeks, is coming up tomorrow. Bob yeah. Bumps whistles. <laughs> that that, that, that's that's worse at least for Cobra. Oh, oh, <laughs> well, up to now you're doing pretty well. <laughs> Linda. No, I don't. Then I shan't be. Stump. Oh, oh Linda. Oh, 